Hey guys and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to be checking out how to make your very own website using the Elegant Themes theme called Divi. Specifically Divi 2.4 which adds a lot of new great features. If you want to see what's new in this update, uh, check the description. There will be a link to my video about that. So let's get right into it. This is going to be a fairly long video. I'm going to be creating a very simple complete website as an example for you. So once you go to elegantthemes.com, just click on join to download. And if you've already downloaded the theme and you know about that, then you can skip ahead uh, also in the description. So personal developer and lifetime. Now the most popular is developer because it's only eight or $90 and you get the access to the plugins, which is why I very much so suggest getting this or if you can afford it, the lifetime access would be best. So after you've signed up, you're going to go to your member center that it, it will show you. You're going to select Divi. You're going to download that. You're going to go to plugins and you're going to select the Elegant Themes Updater and then you're going to download that. So once you've downloaded those two things, you're going to go to GoDaddy.com if you haven't already purchased hosting and a domain name. Now this video isn't going to be descriptive of using WordPress or anything like that. I'm just going to show you how to use Divi. So you're going to go and enter your perfect domain name, purchase that, then you're going to go to hosting, WordPress site slash blog, and then I suggest just purchasing the lowest tier option that's only $4 a month. Sorry if the internet's been kind of slow in this video. It's been kind of bugging up on me all day, but I really need to get this video out for you guys so we could deal with it, right? So 12 months, uh, I suggest just doing the three months because it's the cheapest, and then just purchase that. Unless you're going to really need the, the high-end spec stuff, uh, most people only need the basic. So after you purchase that, you're going to set that up. It should walk you through how to do that. And then you'll be here uh, in your WordPress dashboard. And then you're going to want to upload the theme. You're going to go to Appearance, Themes, Add New, Upload, and Choose File. Now whatever it's saved as, it might still be a folder. You're going to need a zip file like this. On Mac, that's really easy to do. You just find, say this is the Divi file. You're going to right click on that and hit compress. And as you see here, it created a zip file, which is what you will need. Then you're going to choose file, and then you're going to hit that zip of the Divi theme that you uh, downloaded. Then you're going to hit install now, and then after that, activate. Once you've activated, it should look like this in your themes page where it has active Divi. Now, if it says you need an update, you're going to need to go to plugins, add new. This is where that elegant themes updater plugin that you downloaded comes in for use. Now you're going to do the exact same thing here, but with that plugin file also in a zip format. Now, after that, you're going to activate the plugin, go to the plugin settings, Go to elegantthemes.com and get your API code. It should have a quick link to that. And then you'll be ready to go. And after updating, your website should look something like this. Sorry if I kind of skimmed through that. Uh, I'm assuming most of you already have the theme and you know how to use WordPress. So Your website will look something like this. I uploaded a custom logo and a favicon, which is still loading in. But I'll show you how to do that now. If we go to slash WP dash admin, we're going to go over to Divi and then theme options. Now this is a really good idea to go through before setting up any of your websites just to see the basic options your theme offers and to get that customization set up. Once you're there, you're going to see your logo and your favicon. You could upload those there. And then you're going to want to enable fixed navigation. And I like to enable blog style mode, but that is optional. And then we scroll down here. Make sure all four of these are enabled. If you would like to show this on your footer, can be disabled later. Enter all of your profile URLs for whatever your website is for. Scroll all the way down here and make sure to enable responsive short codes, back to top button, and smooth scrolling. Then just hit save. After that, your website sh should look very similar to how mine was looking a moment ago. And we're just going to get right into it by making a new page. So we're going to go to new and then page. And now this is where the Divi builder comes in. This is the key 
experience and tool that Divi offers that makes it so great is this very easy to use builder. Now, now it might look, excuse me, a little intimidating if you're new, but it's really easy to learn and I think you'll get the hang of it. So first things first, we're gonna go over here to the Divi page settings. I suggest hitting full width page because it will look a lot better. And then hide nav before scroll. I would suggest turning that on. What that will do is say this is your menu bar of your website, it will hide it until you've scrolled down like this. That could make a really nice design and it's it's a really good element to have. So now we're gonna enable by clicking this button here and you'll see a nice little layout grid. Let's name our page home. And then if you see this library here, you can load. There's tons of predefined layouts that Elegant Themes has made for you to kind of check out and try to use. Now, as far as I know, none of these have been built with Divi 2.4, so they're not a great example to use for this. So we're gonna build our own. So this is your grid. You have a section here and then a row here that you could insert columns into. You could also add more rows with custom columns. You could add a full width section with its own columns there. And then you could add a specialty section, which you probably won't be using uh, if you're a beginner, but we'll get into that later. So let's just go back to this and insert a column. I think we'll be going with a nice three blurb or three box, I, I mean. So let's insert. Now you see we have all these modules that Elegant Themes comes with. And we could really do some cool stuff with this. We're going to use a blurb module. And we're just going to title it um, something like, let's say, huh, this is my website. And then you could add a URL if you would like for it to be clickable. Uh, you could add an icon. Elegant Themes has a lot of or Divi has a lot of nice icons built in for you to use as well. We're going to use that. Let's just select a nice hourglass. And you can set the icon color. We'll just leave that as the default color. And you could this or enable a circle around your icon, which could look really nice. And then you could uh, enable showing the circle border or not. We're just going to leave that as no. We're going to move the top to left. That'll just make a nice little design change. Then you can choose the animation that it loads in or just select no animation. We're going to select no animation, dark text color, uh, left text orientation is fine. And now we're just going to open a new tab and search for random web design text or something similar. Here's a good website to get that. This is just some example text to show you. Obviously, you're going to enter your own information here for what you would like to be on your website. So once this loads in, we'll be right back to you. I might be pausing frequently because my internet's being so slow. I don't want you to have to wait for all those loading times. Um, so we could generate some text here. I'm just going to do a paragraphs and generate that. Hopefully this loads faster so I don't have to pause the recording. Um, but while we're waiting for that, let's actually go over here. And CSS and C ID and CSS class is probably not something you want to uh, mess with just yet. But we're going to set a CSS ID anyway. We're going to call this about. So what this does is it creates an ID for this blurb here. Only this specific blurb. Now, if we wanted to do some cool stuff, we could select this blurb as the CSS we're talking about. Um, we'll, we'll get into that more later. I know that sounds kind of confusing. So let's go over here. Let's grab some of this example text. Back to our blurb. And then we're just going to paste that in here and save. Maybe. <laughs> there we go. It's being weird. Now, it's a good idea to hit preview before you publish so you can see what this is going to look like before you make it available to your visitors. <coughs> Excuse me. So once that's open, you see we have this nice blurb here with some text and then that icon we added. So this is a good start, but it could get a lot better, right? So let's try some new stuff here. Let's just copy these blurbs, make three of them. 
And then let's add a full width section with a full width header. This is going to be the top of our website. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to call this my awesome website. And then for the subheading, we're going to be a official website or something similar. We're going to go with the dark tech. Let's change that to light text and logo centered. Make full screen. Yes. Sh show scroll down button. Yes. And then you can choose whichever of these icons you prefer. I'm going to go with this one. And then the button number one text. Now let's think here. What kind of what to call what call to action do we want right at the top of our website? If you're a service, you're gonna want check out our services or something like that. If you're selling a product, you're gonna want look at this product or sign up now. We'll just put sign up now and then leave the URL blank because it's not an actual button just yet. But if you were normally doing this, say you had another page called sign up you would enter that your website and then the sign up page for the button to text we're just going to put learn more and then this is where that css comes in we're going to hit slash number sign or hashtag as most of you may call it nowadays and we're just going to enter that uh, css id that we entered in that blurb which is about now what this will do is when someone clicks the button number two, it will automatically scroll down to that specific blurb using custom CSS, which is really cool. Now we can upload a background image. Let's just go ahead and do that and see what it looks like. If we go over to my pictures folder, I have some nice HD pictures to choose from. Let's just go with this one. Might take a minute to upload. It's kind of a big file. Mom, baby, you can do it. <laughs> Almost there. So next we're going to be working on this menu after we get some more content onto our website. I'll come back to you. Oh, never mind. Here we go. So let's set that as the image. See a nice nice image now this is where you can really get cool and do some editing to the image if you choose background overlay color let's just you see it has transparency here let's just do a nice transparent black to make it a dark image and I think that'll look really nice then we're going to enable the parallax effect and use CSS because that just makes a nice effect for it for it then upload our our logo you could upload your logo there. I'm going to leave it with no logo for this one. I just think it'll look better for this specific website. Vertically centered is fine. Let's just paste in some content and save and exit. Then let's preview. Oops, one more thing. Let's move this, drag this to the top so that it's the first thing people will see on our website. And then hit preview again. You'll see it refreshes the preview tab. here we go as you see it didn't work for the black background cover color for some reason we could check into that in a minute but as you see we now we have something cool going on here we have some some character to our website now you notice this white back this white text doesn't look very nice with this background you could change that to dark or some images just won't always work but luckily with those color settings let's just hit the settings for this Let's find out where that went and find out why it wasn't working. Aha, so it didn't save the background overlay color. So let's get that to the nice black. There we go. Let's save that. Preview that. Let's see if it works now. Strange. <coughs> Excuse me. I wonder why it's not working. Let's, let's do some investigating because this is something that could happen for you quite often something's not working you have to figure out how to make it work right so here we go it wasn't saving the actual color so we just needed to adjust this I think that will be good so now let's preview it and it should be working now let it refresh 
There we go. Now you see we have a really nice front page here. Then here's that scroll to bottom or scroll to next button that we added. And then here's the blurbs. Now let's test our learn more button. You see it also scrolls down to these specific blurbs. This button will just scroll down to the continuing section. So now we have something pretty cool going here. You see the hidden navigation coming back up when we scroll down. Really nice. So now let's do even some more customization. These squared buttons are kind of ugly. I'm more of a round person, round button kind of person. So let's go back to our full width header. And then we're going to click on advanced design settings. Let's change the font as well. I like Roboto. So let's hit that. Let's make it uh, all capitalized. I'll just leave the font. I'll move this probably to about 20, maybe 25 for fun. <laughs> Subheading, we also want to change the font. And we'll, we won't make that one capitalized. And let's just bring this down to 16. And then we'll leave all that. Now, you see you could edit the scroll down icon color if you'd like. I think it's good how it is. Now we're going to hit use custom styles for button 1. This is what we were looking for. So the button text size, if we look over here, that's a really nice text size. I think we'll leave that. And then we'll scroll down here to where is it the border radius now this is gonna adjust what your button really looks like I'm going to put it at about 55 okay that looks good now let's scroll down a bit you can select the icon if you'd like I'll leave it blank that looks good looks good Okay, so now we're in the hover settings, which is when you're hovering over it, you see it turns to a nice transparent background uh, with a little bit of white effect. So we're going to edit this a bit with the border radius for when you're selecting it, we're going to bump that up to like 67 or so. And we're going to increase this just a bit. And then we're going to do... Uh, the same thing I'll just leave this off for now but you're gonna want to do the same thing for button 2 so that it matches I'll leave it off to show you the differences of your button so let's just refresh this see what our button looks like and now you'll see that the sign up now has a drastically different effect when selecting but it's still not round we need to make it round and maybe make it so it doesn't fly up just as far so we're just gonna redefine that a bit Go back to the advanced design settings. Find the button. Here we go, button one. Let's see what we could change here. Let's bring down the text size just a tad. The border width, that's fine. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's bring down the radius. Letter spacing is fine. Okay, let's see what this, those few changes will do for the button. Now you can go really crazy. You see the button's a lot smaller now. I think that looks a lot better, but it's still not rounded. How can we change it to be round? Well, you could continue playing with those settings until you get a round button, but what I suggest doing is going to appearance. Let's actually publish this real fast so we don't have to lose that. Then we're going to go to appearance or you can go to Divi once this loads up and we're going to go to customize theme. Now this is where you can really go crazy with Divi 2.4. So if we go to the theme customizer, let that load up. This is where you can really have fun. We're going to go to buttons and we're going to create a new global button standard. In other words, we're going to select what the new default button is. So we want the text size to be smaller. We had it at about six, 17 or 16. White is fine. Background color transparent. That's fine. Now the border radius. Now if we select all the way over to 50, it will be a round button. The further you go to the left, it will be more squared with rounded corners until it's completely squared. Then if you go all the way to the right, it will be completely rounded. 
Letter spacing is fine. Let's change the font to Roboto. It's a really nice readable font. Here we go. We're going to say no to the icon. Now the hover style. Let's actually go back for a second. Text color. Okay, that's fine. Let's go to hover style. Keep all of that the same. And the border radius. Now this is where we, we can make something pretty cool. We're going to select the border radius to be all the way to zero. And the letter spacing, we're going to increase it to two. And then publish that setting. Now let's see what this does to our buttons. Now you'll notice they are rounded buttons, they're smaller, and then when you hover over them they turn to square. That's because on the hover settings I put the border radius over here. If I wanted it to stay uh, rounded I'd put it over here. Let's see what happens if we put it at about half, 25. And then see what happens to our buttons. Now you see when you hover them, they're still nice and rounded, if you prefer that. Now this one is a custom button, which means it's not the default one. You'll see this one doesn't go out very far. This one goes out really far because we selected those custom settings on the edit page in the Divi Builder. So now let's get back into building our cool home page. We're going to add a new standard section. This one I think we'll do one half and one half. We'll do an image. Let's upload an image from pictures. Let's go with something, let's go with this typewriter. Be with you when that uploads. Okay, now that that's uploaded, oops, we're gonna set that as the image. And let's just go through these settings real quick. We're going to turn on open in lightbox so that people can click on the image and save it if they would like. We're going to turn off the animation and we're going to enable remove space below the image. Left is fine. Save and exit. Now we're going to add, I believe we should add a call to action. Now, let's do something like our or premium type writer button URL. We'll just leave that blank. You could set that to whatever page you'd like the button to go to. Button text purchase now, or let's just put purchase. Use background color no, because we're actually, should we? Yeah, let's go ahead and just go with it. Uh, let's just leave the default color, text color light. We might change this. I just want to see what it looks like for now. And the content should have that. There we go. Let's make this a little bit shorter. Just put it like right, right there. Just a nice line. Save and exit. Now let's preview the changes. We can close that tab. This tab is just my custom website I was working on while that image was uploading. So if we scroll down here, now this is what I was worried about. So now this looks kind of boring, right? It's just an image in a, a box, really. So let's fix that. First, we're going to fix the button. I, let's just put slash void since it's not really going anywhere yet. Now let's look at this, see what we want to do here. I think we'll just go with a white background. So we'll just put no there. Change that to dark text, and then advanced design. Now I'm looking for a specific that's fine. Save that. Now the image, advanced design, forceful width, yes, I believe is what we want. Let's see what that does to the image. Preview those changes. Huh. Doesn't seem to do what I was expecting. I'll be right back so I can make sure I do that right. 
Okay, we're back. Sorry about that. It took me a minute to figure out how to do that. But now we can do the change I was thinking of doing. So as I was saying, this looks kind of boring right here. So we're going to go over to the editor. We're going to hit on this menu option for this specific row. We're going to hit make this row fold width, yes. Custom gutter, gutter width, yes. And we're just going to set that to 1. Keep on mobile. We'll keep that as no. And then preview the changes. Now you see we have a nice full width image, but the gutter, maybe we can make that a little bit more because it looks a little weird. So let's go back to the settings. The gutter, let's put that to maybe two. Let's preview those changes. That looks a lot better. So I just messed around with it a little bit more off camera and I think I found a way to make it look better. So make sure your settings look like this right here for the row module settings. We'll just hit save on that. Sorry, just hit the mic. And then we're gonna switch these around. We'll put the call to action here, the image here. We'll preview those changes. And you'll see that it looks like this. Now this looks a little weird, so we're gonna edit that and make that look really nice with the advanced design settings. Let's look for border. Use border, yes. Uh, the border color will probably make it kind of like that. Border width, 10 pixel. We'll just try that for now. And we'll do outset. Save and preview. See what that looks like. Looks a little, still a little weird, but maybe we should change the outline a bit. It's a little too out there for my taste. So let's scroll down. Maybe let's just try the solid and see what that looks like. Looks a little better. I'll play with that a little more off camera and I'll be right back. I did a lot of messing around and I finally got it to look nice as you see right here. Now how I did this is I went to Divi and then Module Customizer which I have open right here. Went to the call to action, I increased the header size, made it capital and increased this padding which is what moved it over to the center like this. I also edited the call to action and changed the text orientation to the justified and I added some more text. So sorry about that choppiness for a minute, but it looks much nicer now. And uh, similar to the Divi Cafe, there's is a little more customized, you know, there's this to the left, uh, and we could try that as well. Let's see what that looks like. Let's move this over. We're gonna change this to left, save, preview. You know, and with Divi or any website builder really, it's all about customization and just trying things until you get something that looks nice. Now that looks a lot better. I'll, I'm happy with this design. Maybe we could use a smaller image, uh, you know, more like this. We could do custom sizing to make it look a lot more like that. But that's the basic gist of that. Now something I also wanted to try is something like this, which would be pretty easy, I believe. So let's add another row here. And this time the one force. We're going to insert an image, upload an image. And I saved some of those from the Divi example. So we'll just upload these two. Let that upload for a moment. We can just close out of these. It's looking nice so far. So just let those images upload. And as I was saying, you know, here you can really customize every box and make something look really awesome. Like every single module you could edit here. It's really cool. So, oops, let's save that. Let that save. Okay, we'll use the bread image. Set that. Um, turn that on. No animation. Yes. Save that. 
Now we're just going to copy that three times and move them over here. Come on. There we go. Then we're going to go to the row settings, full width, custom gutter, down to one, save, and preview. You see now we have a really nice, if we just change all these, it would be a really nice row of pictures that you could click on to zoom in. So let's just change those images to see what we can get. Change that one to the muffin. Then we're going to have to upload some for these. Let's see if we can find it. Here's this one. And this one. Let those two upload. And then next, I think we're going to add a, well, that's uploading, actually. Let's close this. Wait for this to upload. Next, we're going to add a, after this row of images, we're going to add a nice uh, full width section that's going to have a nice information box. And it will look really nice for this, for this theme of a website, you know. So it's looking really nice so far. I might make this a little bit darker, but I think it looks fine. You can see the text nice and clearly. We need to fix this b derpy button that freaks out. This one's much nicer. So let's check on the uploads. Perfect. We'll select probably this one that's still uploading. Come on, baby. And sorry if this isn't confusing at all. I really hope it's not. I'm just trying to show you how to use this uh, Divi Builder and everything. So we'll set that as the image there. And then finally we'll set this as the image here. And then we'll preview those changes. And you see we've run into a problem. We need to use the same size, which I thought I did. Maybe I have some. Let's just for the sake of time, let's just copy these two. And put them here instead. Preview. There we go. That looks nice. So now let's add that next row I was talking about. So this is going to be similar to our top row. It's a full width section, and then a full width header, and then this one we're going to do yes. We're not going to put that on this time. Actually, I think we could do something better with. A regular row actually let's see here I'm looking for let's go with a blurb and for this blurb we're gonna leave the title on we're gonna say great coffee made fresh we're gonna scroll down here add some text very nice and we're going to upload a background wait I think that's a regular image on a background maybe that's in here so we're just gonna hit save real quick hit the menu again just gonna yeah that's fine so let's upload a background for this and we'll just let's see if, what we have have this let's go to pictures find something nice we'll just use this one of a car steering wheel actually what would be even better see if we have this kind of a picture um here this one I think will be better there we go so I'll be back with you once those are done uploading back so we're gonna set that as the background and then it's a pretty big image it's gonna take a minute to load into there let's just check some of these real quick we're gonna hit yes on show inner inner shadow that'll have a nice effect and then we can save that. Let's preview so far just so we get an update on what's going on. 
okay looks fine not exactly what I'm going for just yet for it there we go let's see what let's see if that changes anything okay now we want to edit the background I believe okay um let's let's not do that actually I think it'll look better if we do something different oops so let's add a pricing table instead so we'll just add an we'll keep the same section actually we'll add a new row a full width row or a full single row find our pricing table where are you at pricing tables add a new pricing table make this table feature no title uh, let's just put ground coffee subtitle we'll leave that empty we want that US currency price let's make that like six ninety nine Add some content this is gonna be like a list of features so we're gonna edit this oops there we go let's just copy that make this a bullet menu save that add a new pricing table we're gonna make this one featured and we're gonna call this premium ground currency US price 1999 some text we'll add one more title extreme ground currency US price for $9.99 and add some text <coughs> excuse me oops what did I just do pricing uh, no so now we're gonna go to the advanced design settings and make this unique if we actually just preview what it looks like right now as a default you see it's kind of all messy and ugly I don't know why this one did that let's fix that first we'll just remove that and copy let's actually copy the extreme one put it right there then we'll go to the design settings so if you see it's just a boring white box with a black highlight so let's mess with that a bit show bullet uh, let's say no center list items let's say yes let's edit the header be a little bit bigger this looks good font size a little bit bigger price font looks good okay background color here we go so we're going to make that transparent. Yes, I'm using a border. Uh, actually, no. Featured table. A lot of custom colors in this module. So let's see what we can do. Let's go up here. Start an option. Okay, save. Then we're going to add a background, actually. Keep mobile padding. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make a new section. Make it the same. We're just going to move this into there. Get rid of that. Now we can add a background to this row, which is where this comes in. <coughs> Excuse me. Transparent background color is fine. Show inner shadow. Just go yes. 
see what that does. I think the background is too busy, though. We might have to change it. Oh, well, that's fine, but it's not exactly what I'm going for. But you see it looks a lot better. So let's just actually Google a new wallpaper. Let's search for flat wallpaper. Aha, exactly what I was looking for. Something like something like this would be nice. Come on. Okay, let's see if we could find one that we don't have to go to an external website. Like this. Here we go. So we'll just save that to the desktop. Then we'll go back to editing here. Close that, change the background, desktop, here we go, let that upload real quick, <coughs> come on, there we go, set his background, Save. Now we need to make this transparent. I thought we already did that. Let's just look through here. Background color. Here we go. So let's make sure this stays transparent. There we go. Save that in preview. This is more like what I was going for, but it's still not exactly what we want. So let's just keep editing. Let's look at this for a second, see what I can change. Change the background color a bit. Background color, we're gonna do the same, kind of the same thing we did earlier. Let's make this white. Now let's preview that. Much better. So now we have a nice transparent uh, colors going on here. It doesn't really match the rest of the website, so let's actually change the background yet again. Sorry, I just like everything to look good. Um, let's see what we have. Pictures. Actually, how big is this image? Let's upload it and find out. If it's nice and big, we'll use that. I'll come back to you once that's done uploading. Okay, so it is a pretty big image, so we're gonna try to use that. I'm gonna save and up. Oops, meant to preview, but I guess update's fine. So let's just refresh this. Still saving, now let's refresh. Much better. See now it matches with the rest of the theme. And we could add buttons, I believe. Let's check. We should. Yeah, button URL. We'll just put it slash void. Button text by now. We'll do that on all of them. Let's try some different text, see what it looks like. We'll just go ahead and update that. And then we'll refresh. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we have nice purchasing buttons that goes along with the rest of the theme of all of our other buttons. And now we have this white space here and this is a problem I have encountered. I'm not sure if I'm just doing something wrong or, or if there's a way to fix it, but the, the only way I know how right now is going to the theme customizer. And then going to general settings and layout settings. And then the, I believe it's row height. Let's see if we can, no, that's not working. Maybe if we search home. There we go. 
So if we scroll down to here, this is the mobile version, but you still see these, <coughs> excuse me, white squares here. I believe if we, it's either row height or section height, then we'll fix this. So let's just bring this down to one, save and publish. Let's refresh here. There we go. Now you see we have a nice full, no white space right there, and it looks much better. So what else can we add? Let's go to the editor, edit page. We can close that tab now, close this tab as well. We're getting a nice full website already. So now uh, at the bottom, let's see what we can play around with. Let's see what we have to play around with with modules. Um, a blog. A blog is a good idea. So let's add a blog and let's make this a grid blog. We're going to put five posts. Show featured image, yes. Read more button on. We're going to hide all this just for a, a cleaner look. We're going to save that preview. It shouldn't be much different. It should just be a white space for now. Yeah, it's just that hello world. And we also have this white space here. We could ch fix that as well, what we just did a moment ago. We just have to change the section height again, and then that we can get rid of that. Anyways, let's add some new blog posts with some images. This is also, you can use the Divi Builder for blog posts, which is very interesting. Uh, for the time's sake, I'm just going to use the default editor. I'm going to put bread fresh bread. I'm going to set the featured image down here. And I'll just use this image again. Add our text. And then publish that. And we're also, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to go to all posts and delete the default post that came. That's called hello world. We're just going to hit trash on that. And then if we go update this and view we can scroll down here and see the new post has been added and the old post was deleted and then if we just filled this up with posts it would just keep going and then if you oops zoomed in if you click on that you're taken to this now this is completely editable with the Divi builder you can get rid of this sidebar make it full width all that kind of stuff that you could normally do but for time's sake we're just gonna leave that as default so let's just add a few more posts. We can close this tab now. Fresh muffin. Add our text. Then a featured image. Set the muffin. Then we'll publish that. And then we'll just make one more post just to fill up the blog on the home page. New post. We'll put see what images we have first before we name it. We'll just put the coffee one. Fresh coffee. Add our text. <coughs> Sorry, losing my voice. Really bad timing. <laughs> Publish that. Then we're going to go to the slash home page we have. That we've been creating. We're going to scroll down here and see our nice blog post. Now, Obviously, it looks a little weird since these are all the same pictures, but yours will not, obviously, since yours is your custom website. So that's just been a quick look, or maybe a not-so-quick look, at how to build your own website with Divi 2.4. Now, we're just going to edit one more thing before we go, and that's the footer. A lot of people have asked me how to get rid of this text specifically. So we're just going to go to Theme Customizer. And then Footer layout now I prefer this layout myself but you can choose whatever one you think would look best and you can play around with that I like it as a black background color um, we're not gonna have any widgets in it but our elements we're gonna hide the social icons just to look cleaner footer menu let's change that to white let's make the background black there we go. 
Let's make it all capitalized. Let's bring down the font size a bit. And then bottom bar. Background color black. Text color white. Capitalized. Bring those down. Make this white even though we're not using the icons right now. Then we're going to save that. And then one more thing we should also do while we're here. I believe is in here. Theme accent. Background. Let's make the website a different color. Let's just go with black for now. See what that looks like. Now if we go back to the home page. You see that this looks a lot cleaner now. You're still wondering how do we edit this text. That's pretty easy. You go to your dashboard. Appearance. Editor. And go to footer. And then you're just going to scroll down here in this text of this code and then you'll see it says elegant themes right here and then powered by this is all the text that's in the footer you're gonna have to manually change it so we're just gonna remove the powered by and put awesome website 2015 we're gonna remove the elegant themes just put my name then we're going to look through here Save that and see what that does. Go to our website. Scroll down. Designed by Zachary Nielsen. Awesome. Okay, now we just need to remove WordPress. Here it is. Premium WordPress. Now where is... Should be somewhere through here. Oh, here it is. WordPress. We'll just remove that update refresh now it just says designed by Zachary Nelson awesome website now you see this is a link we can change that to my personal website right here where it says elegant themes .com. let's change that to Zachary Zachary Nielsen .com. update the file <coughs> excuse me and then now that link will go to my website so now you're wondering, why is this the home page? Well, we haven't changed the home page yet, so we're going to go to the dashboard. Going to go to settings in general. You can edit your title and tagline here. And maybe it's writing. No, actually, it's reading. Sorry about that. <laughs> you can select a static page, and then you can select your home page. Post page, you can just leave blank for now. And then save that. Now if we go to the home page, it'll be that page we've been building. So we need to do a little bit of cleaning up here. So first of all, we need to remove this white bar. And how we do that is by going to the theme customizer. Let that load in. General settings, layout, section height. Take that all the way down. That should fix it. Let's check. There we go. So you've now learned how to create your own. Oh, now we have this white space. So I believe we could fix that here. Let's fix that real quick. There we go. Let's make that one. And you could just play with that and get what get what you would like for it to look like. And you know, there's a lot more. Uh, capabilities in Divi 2.4. I plan on making various videos of each specific thing. So be sure to hit the subscribe button for that. And please hit like if you this video helped you in any way. Um, also later today will be a, another video of just how to customize the footer. Videos about how to customize blog posts. How to customize sliders. There's going to be very specific videos on my channel for each element. So please stay around for that. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned how to make your own website. Have a great day and see you in the next one.